We are continuing to discuss anesthetic considerations and at this time we will discuss anesthetic considerations in patients with asthma. Our objectives are explain the underlying pathophysiology of asthma, describe the asthma triggers, uh, outline the risk factors that show to increase the incidence of perioperative respiratory adverse events or PR. AE and especially in children and summarize interprofessional uh, team strategies for improving uh, patient care uh, coordination and communication in the all periods like pre and post operative uh, to manage patient with asthma of course this will lead to improvement of outcome some introduction part like asthma is characterized like um, variable and often reversible airway obstruction with bronchial hyperreactivity and in us 8.4 percent and globally or of global population 4.3 percent are affected and uh, this prevalence continue to rise uh, every year an elevated risk of perioperative morbidity and mortality due to bronchospasm and hypoxia were observed. Pathophysiology part like airway hyperresponsiveness and inflammation are key features for asthma and bronchial smooth uh, muscle constriction and airway inflammation leads to obstructive process known as bronchospasm. So it occurs at the level of bronchi and the wall become inflammated or edematous and uh, smooth muscle constricts and become hypertrophic. If of course it uh, is of a uh, long period of time. What triggers can cause uh, asthma? There are many like allergens which are uh, medications or latex-based uh, medical equipment, respiratory infection, smoke, cold air, uh, very uh, often, especially uh, when you are uh, standing under air conditioner or are going from inside to outside of home and uh, temperature differs. Exercise, stress, physical stimulus or trauma to the airway. Bronchospasm may present as shortness of breath, wheezing, coughing and chest tightness. In a surgical room, bronchospasm will present uh, as a sudden acute rise in peak inspiratory pressure on the ventilator. So how you detect this uh, during the anesthesia and during the surgical procedure so you will see on the ventilatory machine a sudden increase in a PEEP or a peak inspiratory pressure or PEP uh, PIP is a peak inspiratory pressure and will increase in a uh, and positive end the uh, expiratory pressure and the pressure that you set it were a volume control will show you a little bit increase in pressure in the system. So determine whether a patient's asthma is well controlled or poorly controlled is a key in mitigating perioperative complications. And elective surgeries uh, should be postponed until asthma is well controlled by medication or lifestyle uh, modifications. Of course, do a preoperative labs, uh, chest radiographs and some tests to assess pulmonary function like uh, spirometry. Uh, history of recent asthma exacerbations, recent osp hospitalization as well as prior history of trial, tracheal intubation and mechanical ventilation due to asthma is important to obtain prior to going with this patient to anesthesia and a history of any recent wheezing, uh, chest tightness, cough or sharpness of breath or acute episode 
if asthma is of different type like uh, intermittent or pers persistent and uh, repeated um, even many times per day or even at night. In addition to asthma, the following factors have been shown to increase the risk of perioperative respiratory adverse event, uh, PRAE, or perioperative uh, respiratory adverse event. So in children, especially wheezing with exercise, wheezing more than three times in the last 12 months or last year, nocturnal dry cough, percent upper respiratory tract infection, less than two weeks. So you have to ask patient if any respiratory infection were present uh, in the last two weeks or less months. Eczema secondhand uh, smoking when you are standing right uh, behind someone who is uh, smoking and not smoking directly. Family history of asthma eczema, uh, young age like uh, less, than, less than six years. Higher ASA classification, American Society of Anesthesiology, so high risk of ASA or ASA. History of congenital heart disease, prematurity, low birth, uh, weight, obesity and obstructive sleep apnea. And obesity is one of the risks that adds uh, of chances for obstructive sleep apnea. Prophylactic and abortive medications that patients with asthma may take or should take. Uh, starting, as you know, treatment with inhaled beta-2 agonists like albuterol. Adding the second one, which is inhaled corticosteroids like budesonide or, or any other. Also, oral leukotriene antagonists uh, could be added. Or uh, in a severe form, intravenous uh, corticosteroids or IV magnesium that have uh, smooth muscle relaxation properties and especially at the uh, lung level. At the discretion of anesthesia provider or to whether administer prophylactic therapy before proceeding to the operating room. So a question is if to administer prior to surgery some drugs like inhaled beta-2 agonists or steroids. So you have to know that uh, steroids preoperatively will have um, any benefit results if started two to three days in advance of surgery. And systemic corticosteroids and or plus inhaled uh, beta-2 agonists like albuterol, salbuterol, uh, for five days before surgery to have any benefits and uh, was shown to have markedly decreased the incidence of bronchospasm following intubation. Our clinical significance, the most critical times for perioperative respiratory complications with, in patients with asthma represented by induction of general anesthesia and airway manipulation emergency. Uh, these three components are uh, very important to uh, take in account and ensuring that expert team members are involved in the case, not going uh, f on, on a first line and to provide anesthesia only the doctor who just uh, graduated and don't have any experience with uh, such patients. Choosing an inhaled induction over the uh, IV uh, drug induction is typically a major point of considerations uh, of consideration in the pediatric population because children do not tolerate well uh, any uh, manipulations or any pain uh, manipulations. And of course, uh, induction through the inhalatory anesthetics and after uh, placement of IV catheter. All volatile anesthetics like uh, sevoflurane, isoflurane, isoflurane, desflurane have direct bronchodilating properties. But at higher concentrations, desflurane increases bronchial smooth muscle tone and airway resistant. resistance and of course should be avoided in patients with asthma. How about propofol? Uh, this drug demonstrates an excellent ability to blunt airway reflex bronchoconstriction. But this bronchodilation is inferior to volatile anesthetics. Uh, comparing to etomidate or uh, cyopental propofol is associated with lower airway resistance. 
Uh, ketamine have direct bronchodilating effect and blunt airway uh, reflex, uh, uh, especially bronchoconstriction, is blunted. But it also causes increased uh, increase secretions, which can complicate airway management. So at this level, you have to give some anticholinergics to uh, decrease secretions. Otherwise, ketamine is good for uh, keep opening all the airway uh, airways. Uh, neuromuscle uh, blocking drugs are given to improve intubation conditions. Of course, at uh, an anesthesia, if it is a general anesthesia. And in children, uh, depolarizing neuromuscular blocking drugs are uh, often avoided as uh, give some risk of uh, hyperkalemia and cardiac arrest. In, in the setting, of course, of possible undiagnosed myo myopathy, not at all patients. Topical lidocaine applied at the airway before endotracheal intubation is controversial and suggests um, an increased incidence of desaturation in children. So it's uh, not proven clinically. In the acute setting, uh, the use of uh, selective beta blockers are preferred where, uh, when indicated for patient with asthma as beta 2 uh, 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 have action at uh, uh, pulmon or lung level and beta-1 at uh, uh, cardiac level. Non-invasive airway management such as placement of supraglottic uh, airway is associated with a decreased risk of postoperative hypoxemia and coughing. Comparing to the use of an endotracheal tube in adults or in children. In patients uh, with well-controlled asthma, mechanical ventilation is going well as a routine. And however, when aero, airway uh, airflow obstruction is present, bronchospasm causes an obstructive respiratory pattern and prolongation of the expiratory phase of ventilation. A long ample time uh, for exhalation during mechanical ventilation is critical to avoid dynamic hyperinflation, also known as iotopeep. So, as I told you previously, uh, it has the accumulating effect and increased pressure at the end of expiration and during the inspiration as well, as you're trying to give uh, some volume or a pressure that you set up and it's still uh, uh, resistance is present at the level of uh, bronchi and at the uh, lower airways and it will increase pressure. And and always take some air to produce air to peep and uh, hyper inflation of the lungs. Now before emergency from general uh, Anesthesia reversal of neuromuscular blockade is administered. Is it admissible? And it is done with uh, cholinesterase uh, inhibitors, drugs like neostigmine, pyridostigmine, physostigmine, mostly with neostigmine and may contribute to the bronchoconstriction risk by inhibiting the breakdown uh, of acetylcholine. Uh, some alternative exists for uh, uh, drugs like non-depolarizing uh, neuromuscular drugs like rocuronium and vecuronium and this drug is known as Sugamadex with no association of increased risk of bronchospasm. So we are trying to run away from bronchospasm by any of the options. In anesthetized uh, patient with asthma, bronchospasm and wheezing uh, the following other indices should be considered. So if, if you have on a, a patient on a, a table, on a surgical table, so you have to make differentiation when you're hearing some wheezing or bronchospasm expected. So you have to differentiate with anaphylaxis, aspiration of stomach content, aspiration of foregin body like tooth or piece of medical equipment, upper airway obstruction, mainstay intubation, in mostly on the right uh, lung. Uh, in the tracheal tube at the different levels like carina or could be obstructed or calf herniation or calf defected. Pneumothorax, uh, pulmonary edema, 
pulmonary thromboembolism and drug induced uh, histamine release. You have to know these three drugs that produce histamine release, which are which uh, are thiopental, uh, atracurium, and of course uh, morphine. Or other opioids can produce as well a re release of histamine, but not in a such high quantity. And carcinoid syndrome or crisis. So uh, many points to know for enhancing healthcare outcome. So in the preoperative period, patients and families should be counseled to continue all routine asthma-related medications, and this is a. Uh, uh, something usual as patient should take all the medications at, as did it previously and this includes the oral medications with a small sip of water on the morning of surgery and postoperatively patient should be monitored very closely and should return to the pre-anesthetic asthma regime regimen as soon as possible of course after waking up and uh, recovery of uh, peristalsis. Uh, in the recovery room, nurses should escultate the chest frequently in patients with asthma or pulmonary uh, diseases or affection and report any abnormal findings to the physician. Besides bronchodilator therapies, nurse should uh, ensure that the patient is performing deep breathing exercises, so respiratory exercises, and using the incentive spirometer. Ensure that patient has optimal pain control and is awake and alert. If patient have pain, he is trying to do a superficial uh, ventilation of the lung. At the end of each shift, a thorough handoff should be completed to ensure continuity of care. And of course, effective and open communication within the team can help reduce the morbidity and mortality associated with asthma. Every detail is important and should be uh, transmitted to the uh, another shift that's coming. Thank you very much and have a good time, guys.